Good morning everybody. So it's super exciting because today is actually the day that I'm flying out to South Africa. It's the first time that I'm going on an international or intercontinental flight since 2019. So I'm super, super excited and I will be vlogging this whole trip and I thought it would be fun to take you guys along on my day today. So it's currently 4.30 in the morning, which is quite early. Um, I just got here from my house. My parents dropped me off. They were very kind to wake up in the middle of the night and drop me off here. And then I just got through security and I also am already sitting at my gate. It might still change. I have until about 5.10, I think, and then the official gate will be announced, but I think it will be here because it's already on my boarding pass. So yeah, right now I'm just have a quick stop in Amsterdam and then from there I'm flying directly to uh, Cape Town Airport. So I won't get there until about 9.30 at night. So it will be a long, long day, but I'm super excited and it's just really nice to be able to travel again. So. I'll take all the travel days and like the stress of being back at the airport any day. So after getting to Amsterdam airport, I just quickly grabbed some lunch on the go and waited at my gate. And then I just got onto my next flight all the way to Cape Town, which was a very smooth process. I also upgraded my seat so that I would have an aisle seat, which was really nice. And I just watched a couple of movies. And just a quick shout out to KLM because their food was absolutely amazing. I had so many delicious meals and you can choose between like usually a fish option or a chicken. And I think if you uh, announce it in advance, you can also have a vegetarian option. But yeah, the food was absolutely amazing. So we're about to land in Cape Town. I've been on the flight for like 11 hours. So I'm really craving to go home soon or at least go to my hotel. But yeah, just like the last half hour and then we should get to Cape Town. Once in Cape Town, I didn't vlog much, but I just went through security and then I got picked up by a driver, which was arranged by G Adventures, who took me then to my hostel. So I got to the hostel about 30 minutes ago and I just took a quick shower because I felt so gross from the airport. But yeah, it's currently almost midnight. And so I think it will just be best for me to go to bed right now. And then we'll be meeting the group tomorrow at 6 p.m. But there's already some people here. So maybe I'll go and hang out with them during the day. So we'll see how that goes. So guys, good morning. This is my first official day really in Cape Town. Yesterday evening after getting to the airport in Cape Town, I was so tired and I just wanted to go to my bed and sleep. And I did have a good night's sleep, but I did wake up a couple of times because check out, it is already at 10 because today I had a private room, which I'll show you here. It was really beautiful. I like that we had double beds and also my private shower. So I could take a nice shower before heading to bed yesterday evening. But yeah, I was super tired. So I just took a quick shower and then went straight to bed. And because it was already dark at night last night, I had no idea what the views from my room were like. And so this morning I opened like the blinds and this is what I woke up to. I mean, can you believe it? This is such a beautiful view. Now let's not look down there, but if you just look straight out, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I think this is part of the Table Mountain Hill, but I think this might be Signal Hill, but I'm really not sure. Um, just for my quick Google search, it looked like that might be it. But as I said, I just got to Cape Town, so I don't really know yet everything, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. And then you can see like the sun is rising all the way over there in the corner. So if you want to do a group tour with G Adventures, the way it works is basically you can arrive at any time of the day on the day that the tour starts. So for me, the tour starts on like the 22nd of May on a Sunday. So I decided to get here the day before because like the flights that I was looking at were coming from Amsterdam and they would only get in at like 9.30 p.m. And that's actually what I did yesterday. So I decided to come just a day early and I booked like a private room in the hostel that we are staying the first night, like tonight. So I just woke up around like 8, 8.30 and I just got ready. I still need to do my makeup and then I'm going to start repacking my bag just because like I had like my liquids in my little bag so that I could take it out easily in the airport. But now I'm just gonna reconfigure it a little bit and then I'm going to go check out around like 9.30 or 10. And with G Adventures, which is really cool, is they have like this app, I'll show you here. And uh, that way you can already meet with people before the tour starts or just during the tour, you can chat in that group chat and you don't have to like make a separate WhatsApp or whatever like that. 
so that is definitely something that we will be using and we already started using it i think like maybe three or four days before the tour starts people started introducing themselves and asking if we will get to cape town earlier and there's a few people here already so we will probably be doing something around 11 we said so we'll just meet downstairs and then we'll see where the day takes us so i just had breakfast and now i'm getting my bags ready and checking out we are still staying one more night in this hostel but we're doing dorms as soon as like the group gets together so last night i had a private room but then tonight we are staying in the dormitories so once checked out some of the group met up and we went to boulders beach which is this penguin beach in south africa it is not exactly in Cape Town, it's about 45 minutes outside of it, but it was definitely worth driving up there because these penguins were so cute and we had a lovely afternoon there. We then headed to the waterfront to check out what that was like before heading back to the hostel to get some drinks before the welcome meeting. What's up guys, Lisa from the future quickly jumping in to just kind of explain you guys because I kind of left you hanging this day because we met the group around 6 p.m. that evening and because like I was so in the gist of meeting everybody and being in the moment I didn't really vlog anything that night but I did kind of want to explain how it works with the welcome meeting and what you can expect from this when you are booking your first tour with G Adventures. So how it kind of worked was around 6 p.m. we all met up like I was saying before I was hanging out with some of the people already through the group chat but then we met up at 6 p.m. it was like a no, at the hostel, like there was a paper that had like all our names on it and like said that the welcome meeting was like 6 p.m. And they also said this in advance, but just in case you forgot, you could meet at 6 p.m. And we met in this like common area of the hostel and then the CEO and the driver kind of introduced themselves and explained a little bit more about what G Adventures was like and what we could expect for the next couple of days with the tour. We then did like quick introductions. So everybody just said their name, where they were from and which animal they were most excited to see. And that was kind of it for the welcome meeting. But there is always a optional dinner or maybe in some tours it's included. But for us, it was an optional dinner that was available for you to do that evening. Usually most people did all the optional dinners because it was just easy because your reservations were made. The CEO would just reserve a big table at a restaurant close to where you're staying and most people would just join and for this welcome meeting everybody joined which was definitely really nice and it was like a way for everybody to kind of meet each other further but unfortunately in South Africa there's a lot of blackouts and we had a blackout during the dinner so that's why I didn't really film any clips I did get a picture of my food which was very very yummy but yeah I don't really have anything from the night but we then headed back to the hostel to just have an early night because the next morning we were leaving around 6 a.m.
Okay, we just made a first stop and we are in the Namibian desert right now. We just are at a national park and we just quickly stopped for a photo and then we're going to drive to Fish River Canyon next. The border control was quite all right. It wasn't very difficult, so that was quite nice. And yeah, we have about an hour left of driving and that's about it. So we've just made it to Fish River Canyon, which is the second largest canyon in all of the world. And it's actually the largest one in Africa. And we're just going to walk up to a viewpoint now. And then we have about a two kilometer hike back to where the land will be picking us up. And then from there, we'll just enjoy a night at the campfire. So I'm really excited to see this. And it's like the first time I'm seeing something like this. So it's quite exciting. So we've just made our first stop of the day. We actually stopped in Batani for a little while because we wanted to fill up our gas there. But then they, because it's a public holiday, they were closed. So we drove to this other really small town. I don't remember the exact name, but I'll put it up here. And yeah, there are some cute old cars. And then we're about to just fill up the car and maybe stop for getting some snacks before heading all the way to the Namibian desert. And then from there, I don't know if we're going to do another day activity or if it's just a chill day, there should, should be a pool at the place that we're staying. So that could be quite nice as well. So in Namibia there's quite a few driving days and today is actually one of them so we've just pulled up on the side of the road and we're setting up camp for lunch and then afterwards I think we have a couple of hours left I think it's about 200 kilometers before we get to like the desert this is definitely the hardest part of the journey where you are just sitting in the car all day and there's not much happening the landscape's very bland but it's fun just talking to everybody and getting to know everybody so we've been doing a little bit of that and then hopefully we get to chill a bit before sunset tonight at this at the next camp. The next morning we made our way to the Namib desert and we wanted to visit June 45 so we got up really really early so we would get there around sunrise and the reason June 45 is called that is because it's actually just located 45 kilometers from the entrance gate of the national park so we drove that distance until we got to June 45 and then we made our way to the top. So we were just at June 45 and right now we're making our way to the next point which is Netfle and it's like one of the valleys here in this area of the desert so we'll just make our way uh, in a 4x4 and then once we get there it's like a short drive we will be having a little explore there and then make our way to the next stop. Basically, we got picked up with the 4x4s, four then the wind blew in, the ocean is over here, the river was running down to the ocean, and the first dune block over here, which is this one, over here, dead fly, and then it happened again, we had blocked it, which is uh, sausage fly, and then the one 
blocked again, which is at the parking lot. made it to Botswana now and we are going to do a Okavanga Delta flight which is something that I've been looking forward to this whole trip. 
we will be leaving shortly uh we got here yesterday to botswana but it was kind of like a chill day because we had to drive and get the border crossing over with and then afterwards we were just you know you we were chilling at the camp and you could do like a bushman walk but i decided against that i just wanted to chill at the campsite and then yeah today we drove to the next town which is called Maun and it's like the third or fourth biggest city in Botswana and we are here so that we can do the Okavanga Delta tomorrow but there's also the option to do an additional activity with G Adventures which is where you go and do the Okavanga Delta flight which is flying in a small plane low over the Okavanga Delta and you get to see some of the wildlife as well so that is what a bunch of the group is doing not everybody but quite a few people are so that's where we are going now The next morning we got picked up by these 4x4s and headed to the Okavango Delta. This was such a cool experience because we were going to be off grid fully for the first time on this trip and I couldn't have been more excited. The trip there was amazing and once we got there we loaded off all of our materials and onto these Mokoros. So we just got into the Mokoros and we are going to be taking these to our campsite tonight which is kind of oh, to totally uh, off grid and we will be guided by one of the locals here as well so that's super cool. Once we were settled in, we went on one of these Bushman walks, which was guided by one of the locals, and we saw some amazing wildlife. We saw some elephants, giraffes, and it was such a cool experience to do this on foot. Like, we weren't in a vehicle or anything. We're just by ourselves and one of our guides. Afterwards, we just headed back to watch the sunset, which was so cool to just take in that moment and really experience where you were in the world. And once we came back to camp, we were greeted by the locals doing a local traditional dance and performance. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because it was such a unique experience. <laughs> The next morning we woke up super early so we could catch the sunrise before we had to head back to clean up the camp and pack everything back up and head into the Makoros and go back to civilization. So we're just making our way back now to the campsite that we stayed at the night before last and yeah it was absolutely amazing to spend the night here out in the Okavango Delta and I highly recommend everybody to try it if they have the opportunity to do so because it's definitely some of the best memories from this trip. So today we are doing the Chobe River Sunset Cruise and this will be from 3.30 until about 7 p.m. Chobe Sunset River Cruise was one of the optional activities you could do and I wasn't initially too excited about it but it was very surprising the amount of animals we saw and it was one of the activities the CEOs recommended and I'm really happy they did because everybody went on it and it was truly an amazing experience.
the next morning we headed out for a safari which was three hours long in Chobe National Park and as you could see we saw so many lions which was a unique experience that we weren't expecting and for many of the group it was the first time seeing lions in the wild so that definitely made it a little bit more special to see them and see such a high abundance of them. When we first got to Victoria Falls, we were greeted by these local ladies who had prepared a Zimbabwean lunch for us. It was a very traditional lunch and it was a little bit different from what we had on the trip so far, but I definitely did enjoy it. Some people were not so much a fan of it, others were definitely a fan of it, so it's kind of own tastes. Hello guys, when you are eating salsa in Zimbabwe, you have to cut salsa into small pieces and you put a small hole so that when you are putting your veg, your kale veg, you can put it in a hole. You start eating, you can mix everything here. You start eating, enjoying your food. So we just got to Big Falls yesterday evening. We had dinner with the whole group and today we're kind of on our own to explore. So a few of us decided that we wanted to see the falls first before doing any of the adventure activities that you can do here as well. So we just paid our $30 entrance fee. That's what every foreigner pays. If you're local, you pay a little bit less. And if you're from Zimbabwe, you pay even less than that. But yeah, we'll just go there now. It's supposed to be very wet, so we all have our rain jackets with us. You definitely need one. You can buy a poncho here if you want to, but if you don't, uh, just bring a rain jacket and expect that your stuff is going to be wet. So don't bring too much stuff that you don't necessarily need for the falls. After visiting the falls, we went to the Lookout Cafe for some lunch and from there you could see some people zip lining and look over the gorge, which was such a beautiful viewpoint. We then headed back to the hotel and got ready for the Sunset River Cruise, which was our final activity with majority of the group because the next morning a lot of them were leaving. So it has been an incredible 21 days with everybody and saying goodbye was definitely not easy, but it had to be done. So today's activity includes doing a helicopter ride. This is definitely an additional activity that you can book with G Adventures, but I decided to do it because I've never been in a helicopter and I'm super excited. There's like five of us that are joining and it's gonna be amazing. We are just doing the shortest flight, which is just going over the falls, not over the gorge. If you want to, you can do an upgraded version and go all the way over the gorge or even over the Zambezi River, which is even longer. But we just went with the short one because we want to see the fall from above. Before getting into the helicopter, we got a quick debrief from one of the people working there. He explained kind of what we could expect from the helicopter ride as none of us had ever done this before. Then it was time to go off and head to the helicopters.
We then headed out of the country so that we could do some of the activities on the bridge. This is kind of in no man's land, which is kind of creepy, but also kind of cool. And some people did zip lining, but there were many other activities that you could do as well. As you can probably tell by the next clip, I got sick my last week in Africa and I still wanted to share kind of what my experience was like. But yeah, I definitely wasn't feeling the best. So I just wanted to share the experience, but know that it was a little jaded because I was a little sick. So we arrived at Matopos National Park yesterday, which is the national park that we're doing here in Zimbabwe. And we will be going on like a rhino walk today, which is like super exciting because we have seen black rhinos so far but this trip we're supposed to see white rhinos as well So a question you might have by going on one of these walking safaris, like isn't it dangerous to be as close to these rhinos? But because there was guides with us that had known these animals since they were born, they're kind of protecting and preserving them and helping them survive from poachers. It was actually a really safe environment and they knew that we weren't there to harm them because we were taking measures that were indicated to us by our drivers and our guides. final safari stop that we did on our trip was to Kruger National Park which is one of the most known safari parks in South Africa and we actually got to spend two days here one of which we were driving with a safari vehicle and that is the footage that you're seeing right now. 